Hey Vinyl Community, Brian again, Gibson A9 on YouTube, back again for another installment of our Prague, of my Prague vinyl collection. Doing a video series going through that collection and uh, hope you've been enjoying it. So we're up to the J's now, um, and again, not a super uh, long video because there's not all that many J's, but uh, um, we'll go ahead and dive in real quick. Um, Actually, the music that's playing in the background, uh, this is a guy, a French guy, I don't know if he's French-Canadian or French, um, but Jean-Michel Jarre, and this is Oxygen, um, which is a, a kind of a classic synthesizer type album. If you like Tomita and Vangelis and kind of synth-related albums, this is a real classic. Um, uh, this is a promo copy. Uh, but this was from, I think this is an, the American copy, 1976, and this is just excellent synth. Here's the synthesizers he played on this one. Uh, the ARP and AKS, whatever that was, VCS3, Farf, uh, Farfisa Organ, uh, Mellotron. Uh, so he had some great, great analog synth work on this. Um, that's what's playing in the background. Uh, this is the same thing. This is a French copy I got when I was over in France. The different back on it. Um, different label there. It's a uh, disc motor. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, good work there. Another classic that he had. Um, there was Oxygen. There was uh, Equinox. And I can't believe it, but I apparently haven't picked up a copy of Equinox. So I've got my eye out for that one. And he had a number of later works uh, also, but those were kind of the two that he's most known for. Um, uh, so, the big heavy hitter in the J's for progressive rock, of course, would be Jethro Tull. So, I don't have all the Jethro Tull albums by any stretch, but I've got a bunch of them, so we'll go through. I'm not a huge Genesis, uh, I'm sorry, Jethro Tull expert. Um, I know kind of the standard stuff, but in terms of their history, I'm not fully up on it. So, for example, not sure if this is their very first album or if it was the second album. This is Stand Up uh, by Jethro Tull um, on Chrysalis Records. This was from, doesn't even say, maybe 69 or 70, I think is when they got their start. So, um... This is a classic, Aqualung, uh, one of their classic albums, I would say. Aqualung, uh, most of you be familiar with Jethro Tull's songs on this. Aqualung, my friend, of course, Cross-Eyed Mary, um, Locomotive Breath. Those are three of the you know, most classic uh, Jethro Tull songs. Hang on a second, Jean-Michel is starting to irritate me. Maybe I'll turn that down a little bit. Um, but yeah, this you know those three songs are probably three of the classics in there, at least classic hits that you'd hear on classic rock radio um, from Jethro Tull. The album, though, that probably ranks the highest in terms of being a prog classic would be Thick as a Brick. And this is just an amazing album. Um, this was set up to... Uh, this is a great... Pa album packaging masterpiece here. This was set up to look like a newspaper. So it, um, you unfold it this way, it's got, it folds down, you can turn the pages just like you're reading the newspaper, um, and the stories in here are all customized. They're all funny, weird stories that I guess Ian Anderson was responsible for writing. Uh, just really bizarre, interesting reading. Um, so, uh, very very cool packaging and I know that there's there's a concept for all this and I just don't know what the concept is I hadn't listened to this in a while but um, I'm sure Ian Anderson was trying to say something here and it's just escaped me but the music is phenomenal and I believe that it's two songs they're just one side per or one song per side of the album but uh, um, amazing amazing quality of the prog music on this. Thick as a Brick by Jethro Tull. Um, and again, a little fuzzy on what year that would be. Um, easily early 70s, 71, 72, 73, something like that. Um, uh, 
Okay, the next one I've got, this is Living in the Past. This is a very thick, uh, like booklet type uh, packaging here, a hard hardback collection. And I, I guess, I believe this is like a greatest hits type package um, with their earlier works from their studio albums on there, which they did a lot of. But, um, another, another great album, uh, A Passion Play by Jethro Tull um, with the dancer on there. And this is again. They didn't. They're not printing the uh, the years on these, but I'm thinking maybe '74, somewhere in that range. But um, excellent, excellent work as well. Same thing for Minstrel in the Gallery. And I don't know if this is an original. I think the original may have been a gatefold, and this one's not a gatefold sleeve. Um, sorry, that was that was upside down. This one actually flips like this way. Uh, but. Uh, what was on this? So the song Minstrel in the Gallery, of course, um, Requiem, Cold Wind to Valhalla. So this is up to 1975 here. So uh, um, uh, one of my favorites also, this is a little bit later, maybe 76, Songs from the Wood. Jethro Tull, Songs from the Wood. Um, this was, seemed like the quality went back up on this one. Uh, um, Maybe a little bit more of a proggy sound on this, but uh, um, Jethro Tull had kind of a cool sound. Obviously, Ian Anderson playing the flute in a in a real aggressive way. Um, he was the lead singer, a, a strong lead singer, and a very strong flute player, and a strong personality. You know, he had those fruity-looking leather boots he'd wear, and he'd he'd stand a certain way and hop around and twirl the he'd twirl the flute at you and stuff and. Uh, very entertaining show, but for you vinyl guys, check this out. This is really cool. Um, he's got the he's got the chopped wood stump there with the uh, tone arm on it, so that's a pretty cool little detail. So uh, live album, Jethro Tull live bursting out, um, and there's Ian Ian the showman. Um, but just a great bunch of musicians in, in Jethro Tull. Uh, excellent drumming, excellent guitar work. Um, I think Barry Moore is the guitar player's name, but I should know more about Jethro Tull. Um, even though I'm a progressive rock guy, there's some groups I just know more about than others. I'm big into Yes and ELP and uh, um, not as much into Jethro Tull and Genesis, so I know some of the songs and all, but I, I'm not as well versed as I probably should be. So here's uh, MU, The Best of Jethro Tull. So a white album cover. Kind of hard to find it in good clean shape. This one's not a very clean copy. Um, you can't really even see anything here, but uh, the songs on this, the Teacher, Aqualung, Thick as a Brick, um, Bungle in the Jungle, Locomotive Breath, Fat Man Living in the Past, A Passion Play, Skating Away on the Thin Ice of a New Day. That's a great song from War Child. Um, Rainbow Blues and Nothing is Easy, so a good smattering of what they would call their greatest hits. Uh, greatest Hits Volume 2, so this was called uh, Repeat, The Best of Jethro Tull. Um, and uh, Minstrel in the Gallery, Cross-Eyed Mary, Bure, um, War Child, Too Old to Rock and Roll, Too Young to Die, so they're one of the groups that truly had enough good material to fill up two or three greatest hits collections. So, um, all right. So moving through the J's, uh, that's that's Jean-Michel Jarre and Jethro Tull. Um, the next one is an album that uh, I think is great. Um, I listened to it a lot in college, um, and those of you that know Prague will, will know this guy. But um, this album is Eddie Jobson, Zinc. Um, and this is an original, still in the shrink, you can see the original sticker and all. Um, Eddie Jobson was the keyboard player um, for UK, and before that uh, he played with um, uh, Curved Air, I believe, on Air Cut album, um, but, uh, and maybe with, um, I don't know who he was with before that, but anyway, um, he has a really unique singing voice, and he's a great synth player, but he's maybe best known for playing uh, 
electric violin and he had this, you can see it there, it was kind of a acrylic see-through violin that was just kind of wild looking, but um, amazing player. Um, my favorite work that he did was on UK, uh, the group UK, the first album in Danger Money. Um, but uh, this is a good album too, a little bit, a little bit strange, kind of 80s sounding, but uh, um, just kind of an odd sounding, neat progressive rock album. Um, Eddie Jokes and Zinc, and I don't know if Zinc was the name of the band or the name of this project. It wasn't quite clear, um, but the album, the tracks here, Transporter, Easy for You to Say, uh, was a good song. Turn It Over is a good song. Um, so if you see a copy of this one, pick it up. It's kind of hard to come by. Um, this is the same album. This is just a green promo copy. I guess they sent these green vinyl ones out as promos. This one doesn't really have the the sleeve for it. It just came in this plastic, but a uh, green vinyl pressing of Eddie Jobson's Zinc. So, um, okay, so that's the J's. We're almost halfway through the alphabet. Uh, those of you that are new to progressive rock, I hope it's a little bit informative. We're talking a lot about the albums and when they came out, but of course you can't really hear them. So, um, I encourage you, if you are interested at all, to go out and uh, go to YouTube and look up some of these albums and listen to some of the songs. And some of these groups you'll like, and other ones you probably won't like. Um, but it's interesting to find out kind of what, what you enjoy. Um, as for me, I like albums that have very impressive keyboards. Um, I'm more of a keyboard guy than a guitar guy. So anything with Hammond organ, um, Mellotron, analog synthesizers like the Moog, um, the ARP, uh, but not just by itself, but that used in a setting of well-written songs with good vocals and good songwriting. Um, there's a lot of albums out there, you know, the Moog, Moog Cookbook and Moog This and Moog That, but a lot of those, the, the songwriting is just kind of, you know, comes up short, I think. So uh, albums like Yes, uh, Close to the Edge and, and uh, Thick as a Brick and some of these um, just excellent uh, composition work, excellent songwriting skills on display. So um, those of you that have already gotten into Prague, you probably know more about Prague than I do. I apologize for the parts where I don't know as much as I should, but hey, we all have access to Wikipedia, right? So you can look all this stuff up and read up. So anyway, I'm enjoying making these videos for you guys. Hope you're enjoying it. Um, you can see we're kind of up, uh, we're up to this point now. We've got this is J's here, so we've got uh, uh, K's all the way down to the other end through, through Z left to go. So um, thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you later.